Yeah, so I work for the Department of Pharmaceutics and as, as such I, I focus uh, on EV cargo delivery and uh, as part of this education day I would like to discuss some of the basic processes that are very important for that. Um, I think most of you uh, are familiar with what extracellular vesicles are, but just for clarity I wanted to discuss that in this topic uh, I'm mainly referring to exosomes and, well, my slides say microvesicles, but if we just learned it's more clear to say uh, ectosomes. And of course, they're a very interesting tool to use for EV cargo delivery uh, because of their natural intrinsic capacity to deliver uh, RNA, lipids, proteins, uh, metabolites, all sorts of molecules due to the role that they play in intercellular communication. Um, but this process actually consists of various steps that are all pivotal. Um, and unfortunately, because we have 15 minutes, I don't have time to discuss everything today, so I wanted to uh, focus on a few points and give a general introduction on it. Um, so firstly, of course, uh, cargo loading, as, uh, as we've just heard, is a, is a pivotal step, of course, for your EV cargo delivery. Uh, this can occur in the cell, but this is something that we can also do post-isolation. Uh, there's been uh, quite some work published on that as well. Um, after EV release, um, your uh, EVs, of course, will need to interact with your target cell. Uh, tissue targeting in and of itself is, of course, a major field um, within the uh, EV research field. Uh, but one of the things that's incredibly important for EV cargo delivery is EV uptake. Um, for EV cargo delivery, um, especially with intraluminal delivery that's on the inside of your EV, at a certain point membrane fusion is going to have to occur somewhere within the target cell uh, in order for the intraluminal uh, cargo to be released. Now theoretically this could happen uh, directly at the cell membrane, although there is uh, limited evidence for this. What we actually see is that uh, uh, endocytosis is one of the main processes that plays a role in this. In fact, what we see is that if we knock down or inhibit endocytosis uh, of the target cell that we very much uh, block most EV cargo delivery. And then, of course, uh, lastly, there is your functional readout, which could be any type of uh, clinically relevant assay, but what's often also used to optimize any type of strategies is uh, fluorescent reporter systems, for instance, uh, based on Cree recombinase or CRISPR-Cas9. Now, today I'd like to focus on cargo loading and on endosomal escape. Um, and firstly, on cargo loading. So this is a, there's a lot happening in this image. It's uh, from a review that was uh, published earlier this year in Journal of Controlled Release. It gives a nice overview, and I kind of want to walk through this uh, figure with you. Um, there are various ways, of course, to load cargo into EVs. My favorite topic of research is target loading. Um, but uh, since it's the education day, I kind of want to go over all these topics and broadly discuss some examples. Uh, now, as you see on the left, there are four um, kind of categories surrounding the EV producing cell, and on the right, there are two uh, categories that are focused on loading cargo into uh, EVs that have already been isolated. So, firstly, I wanted to start with cargo loading of your EVs, uh, especially in what we often refer to as passive loading. As we know, EVs uh, reflect the content of the cells that they produce. You can't have proteins or messenger RNA that are inside your EVs or uh, in the membrane if they're not expressed, of course, in the cell that produces these EVs. Um, and uh, part of the components will be enriched, but part of them are somewhat stochastically end up in your EVs. Uh, and this entire process is, of course, due to their natural uh, biogenesis. But as a result, overexpressing compounds uh, will result, uh, or molecules, proteins, uh, will result into um, enrichment of or loading of your cargo into these EVs. It is not very efficient, but it does work, and you often see that this is applied for RNA. I wanted to show you an example um, that this can actually also uh, be applied for compounds, such as small drugs. For instance, this is a study, it's already almost 10 years old, but this research group wanted to deliver an anti-tumor drug, Paclitaxel, um, using EVs. And what they did is they treated uh, MSCs with this compound for 24 hours, and after 24 hours they isolated the extracellular vesicles. And through HPLC, they found that this compound was also uh, loaded into the EVs that these uh, cells uh, then release. Uh, now, it's still functional. Unfortunately, I don't have the pointer, but in the bottom graph, you can see that, that this compound inhibits tumor proliferation. 
But these EVs are now also able to do so. And even though it doesn't seem to be doing it more efficiently in this case, it does give you the option to, of course, deliver your cargo with a completely different biodistribution profile and perhaps even specifically target tumor cells uh, to decrease any off-target cyto uh, cytotoxicity. Uh, on the topic of passive loading, we also know that uh, changing your culture conditions uh, of your EV producing cells will strongly, of course, affect the, the, the proteins, the messenger RNAs that they produce, and therefore also that end up in the extracellular vesicles. Um, in the first uh, edition of the Journal of Extracellular Vesicles, this was actually for the first time kind of properly quantified on the level of proteins and uh, RNA, but since then, uh, it's also been shown that not just changing culture conditions like oxygen, but even the culturing medium uh, may affect the contents of your EVs. Um, What's often studied is the effects of, for instance, hypoxia on mesenchymal stem cells. It's been shown that this actually increases the capacity of MSC-derived EVs to induce angiogenesis. Um, it may also affect the interaction of your EVs even with the extracellular matrix. And there's also studies that show that, for instance, inflammation or adding compounds that induce inflammation uh, will also alter the content and uh, functionality of your EVs. And the take-home message of this is that depending on your culture conditions and your isolation methods, uh, this may strongly affect the clinical applicability um, of your uh, EVs. And as an example, this is a study of a research group that wanted to use um, cardiomyocyte-derived EVs to increase angiogenesis. And uh, what they found is if they cultured their EV-producing cells in hypoxic conditions, so low oxygen, um, they actually saw an increase in the capability of these EVs to uh, stimulate angiogenesis. So here you see a um, migration wound assay where there's a monolayer of endothelium, there's a scratch through it. And if you add these EVs, uh, you induce the speed in which these cells kind of close the gap. Um, but you can actually see that this happens faster if you use EVs that are derived from cells that were cultured in hypoxia. They saw the same in network formation assays where you culture endothelial cells on top of matrigel. They form this, this, this network. This is called an androgenic network formation assay. And all parameters of this uh, um, assay, so the size of the network, the number of branching points, it was all increased when they used EVs derived from um, hypoxic cells. So this might not be the way for you to load your compound, but do consider that this is something that you could synergetically use with whatever compound you, you'd want to use. So suppose you want to set up a strategy where you deliver something that increases angiogenesis and you're using MSCs, why not also um, increase their efficacy even more? Um, so the question is, of course, what causes this? These authors also looked into that, and what they found is that there was an increased uh, level of pro-angiogenic microRNAs into these, uh, that were loaded into these EVs. Uh, it's also possible to load quite some cargo post-isolation. Uh, uh, the nice thing about this is that you are not affecting uh, EV biogenesis, um, but you can actually alter them in their kind of natural form after you isolate them. Now, what's important to consider is uh, if you want to load cargo to the inside of your isolated EVs, you will need to temporarily destabilize the membrane. Uh, and this is a fine balance. If you are too careful with this, if you are too gentle, then you may have a very inefficient loading because you're not creating enough pores in the membrane. If you are too aggressive in this, uh, you will destroy your EVs. So just to kind of go over the basics of this, um, there's a few ways in which uh, people have been uh, capable of doing this. One of them is using mild detergents to temporarily induce pores. There are freeze-thaw freeze cycles. The crystallization of freezing may affect your membrane. Um, you can also use sound, transfection, uh, and electroporation, and especially the latter to require a substantial amount of controls because transfecting something into EVs um, it's quite difficult to, of course, uh, really show that you've transfected something into EVs. Um, you really need to make sure that you're not just, at the end of the day, adding transfection reagents alongside EVs. Um, and that's kind of difficult to control for. Electroporation uh, has some challenges, which I'd like to discuss in a minute. And for external membrane modifications, there's a few ways in which you can incorporate something into the outside of, the e of EVs. Uh, one of them is lipid anchors, such as cholesterol. You can, you can attach cholesterol to RNA, which will uh, result into the cholesterol till kind of incorporating into the lipid membrane of the EV. Uh, there's click chemistry in which you can covalently bind, uh, for instance, antibodies um, to proteins on the outside of your EV. But you can also combine the first strategies. For instance, you can express uh, on the surface of an EV a protein binding um, 
uh, sorry, uh, antibody binding protein, that you can then treat your EVs with antibodies in a way to combine these strategies. Um, as an example, uh, doxorubicin, uh, another anti-cancer drug, uh, can be loaded because it's a small molecule into EVs by electroporation. And what this group did in this, this study, what's, what's nice about doxorubicin is it also has fluorescent uh, properties so you can quite easily follow, uh, follow along. Uh, what happens with this molecule is uh, if you add similar levels of doxorubicin incorporated into EV, so that's the middle panels here in these pictures, as compared to giving it separately to cells, which are the left panels, you strongly increase not only the delivery, but as you can see in the bottom uh, graphs, the purple lines are actually the delivery of doxorubicin through EVs and the same dose as the yellow line at the bottom. Uh, you can strongly increase the efficacy of this, uh, of this drug. But what's also nice about this is, again, you have this completely different level of biodistribution. Um, I'm going a little bit short on timer, so I'm going to hurry up a little bit. Um, I quickly wanted to discuss something important about electroporation uh, of RNAs into EVs. Uh, there's been quite a few papers on this topic. Uh, and uh, when this was first published, uh, we were kind of surprised with how efficiently this worked. And then it turns out that, and this paper is worth looking into, um, we may have overestimated the efficiency of this technique a little bit because what people did was they checked for fluorescently labeled SI RNAs and electroporated them into EVs and looked for 100 nanometer fluorescent particles. If they saw that, then clearly your EV has been loaded with your fluorescent SI RNA. In reality, what happened was we were also creating 100 nanometer aggregates through electroporation. So this is not to say that this technique doesn't work. There have been very reputable groups that have been able to do this. But keep in mind that this can happen if you want to go down this route and incorporate the right controls for it. Now, my favorite talk, topic is engineering for targeted loading of cargo into your EVs. Now, we know that there are a number of proteins that are strongly enriched in EVs, for instance, membrane proteins such as tetraspanins or lipid raft-associated proteins, um, but also uh, proteins that are involved in EV biogenesis. And one thing you can do is you can fuse your protein of interest uh, to these proteins, and they will then also be enriched in your EV. An example of this is this study from a few years ago uh, from Kodiak. And what, what they did is they isolated EVs uh, quite purely with the density gradients, looked at the different populations, and did proteomics on all these populations and compared them to each other and to the cell. And they really wanted to see what are the most uh, enriched proteins in these small extracellular vesicles. What they then did is they fused GFP to it and expressed them in EV-producing cells. Now, in the middle graph here with the bars, you can see that the GFP levels in the producing cells didn't really differ as much. But as you can see in the bottom graph, what they found was fusing it to specifically enriched proteins actually resulted in a hundred to a thousand fold increase in loading as compared to just expressing GFP. Uh, so this is a very interesting way to load, have the cell load your protein of interest into your uh, EV. Uh, you can also do this for RNA. In this study, um, uh, bioinformatics analysis basically looked at all the RNAs that you can find in, uh, in EVs from a specific uh, cell source and found a code uh, that was enriched. Uh, and when they fused this to a fluorescent probe, just by doing that, they were able to enrich the loading of this probe tenfold. So this also works on the RNA level. Now, for both protein and RNA, I should say that keep in mind that this may be cell-specific. Now, in my last a uh, minute and a half, I would very much like to stress one very important part, and that is uh, endosomal escape. Uh, because like we've just heard, the endosome, if your cargo can't escape, uh, your cargo will end up in the lysosome and be degraded. Um, the problem is we don't 100% exactly know how this process occurs yet. So what a lot of uh, research has now been focusing on is incorporating proteins that really help with the endosomal escape. One commonly used protein is the VSVG uh, protein. It's a viral transmembrane protein. And what it does is when pH lowers, it undergoes a conformational change, reaches out to the nearest uh, membrane, and causes fusion. Now, this, this pH drop you also see in the late endosome. So if your, your particles are taken up, uh, the pH drops, your membranes will fuse, and you will have cargo uh, delivery. So one example is this study where they actually used uh, targeted enrichment by fusing their cargo through a ligand interaction to CD63. And they were only able to really see efficient delivery of Cre or Cominase, a protein, if they also included VSVG, which resulted in a hundredfold increase in delivery. 
So what this shows, this doesn't mean that this is necessary to do, but it shows that this is a limiting step and we can strongly increase cargo delivery by helping endosomal escape through these types of proteins. Um, this has been shown in multiple studies now for multiple types of molecules, messenger RNA, Cas9, fluorescent proteins. So this is really something uh, that you're starting to read more and more about. Um, there is much more to discuss about EV cargo delivery, but uh, my time is up. I'll be around for the conference, so if you have any questions outside of this session, feel free uh, to come talk to me. But my take-home messages here are that because EVs have this intrinsic capability for cargo delivery, uh, you can use them to deliver a wide variety um, of compounds, and you can load them in many different ways. But one of the things that really helps is to really uh, understand the basic uh, biogenesis methods uh, biogenesis processes that you can kind of hijack to load your cargo and also be aware of the fact that increasing endosomal escape strongly enhances uh, the delivery of your cargo. Uh, with that, I'll leave some articles up there which I think are nice about this topic and I'd like to thank you all for your attention. <laughs>